Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's meeting. Before we start our, our meeting, as always, become a tradition now to allow um, our city clerk to read the quote for the week. Madam City Clerk. Thank you, Mayor. Be honorable yourself if you wish to associate with honorable people. Thank you. <laughs> call the third regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Boren. Here. Bauk. Here. Serta. Here. Gisha. Here. Hannah. Here. Heidemann. Here. Kittleson, here. Kleunis, here. Manny, excuse, Meyer, here. Montemayor, here. Rinfleisch, here. Ryan, here. Vanderweel, here. Verhasselt, here. and Wangaman. Fifteen present. Quorum is present. Uh, this time I'd ask Alderman Bout to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Bout. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Baird. I move that the previous minutes be accepted and placed on file. Second. And the same be entered on as read. Second. Motion and second to approve the minutes. Under discussion. There being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes are approved. Resignations. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I have a letter that the mayor received from Richard Gephardt, Finance Director Treasurer, advising that uh, he'll be retiring on June 29th, 2007. And he indicates he'd like to thank uh, the mayor and uh, citizens uh, for the opportunity to serve the citizens of the community. Ask for a motion to accept and file. Mr. Mayor, I, uh, <clears throat> I make a motion to accept and file. Second. Motion and second to accept and file. Under discussion, I would just like to uh, let you know that Mr. Gephardt was unable to attend today. He, he left home not feeling too well uh, from work. And uh, I just wanted to thank Mr. Gephardt personally and publicly uh, for the great work, super work that he did for 26 years. Now, folks, that's a long time. It's, uh, it's commitment and dedication to an entity uh, such as the city of Sheboygan. Uh, so I think I speak for all of us on behalf of the, the entire Common Council. Mr. Gephardt, thank you very much. I hope he's watching. Confirmation of appointments, Eddie. Hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration. The Special Table of Organization Review Committee. Uh, all the person, Hannah, Montemayor, Boren, Sean Rice, John Signer, and Derek Rupp. Uh, signed by the mayor. Ask for motion to confirm. Motion to confirm. Second. Motion and second to confirm under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Appointment is confirmed. Next item on the agenda is a good item on the agenda. Presentation of sponsorship check to the City of Sheboygan by Community Bank and by Community Bank and Trust for the Esslingen Sister City visit. Mr. Frank Robert, Mr. Robert. On behalf of Community Bank and Trust, uh, I'm pleased to present the City of Sheboygan and the Mayor's International Committee with a check for $5,000 to defray some of the expenses for the international dignitaries that are coming to uh, the city. And as a reminder, thank you, Mr. Rahman, as a reminder, we will be hosting our sister city delegation from Germany coming soon in about a couple of weeks. And uh, we got a great schedule planned out. So I hope everyone, all of you can join us. Thank you. And thank you to the Community Bank and Trust. What, no. 
Next item on the agenda is Proclamation of Public Works Week, and right after that, we'll do a Proclamation for City Clerks Week. I don't know how they got together at the same week, but they did. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're competing here, but uh, I'd ask Mr. Beeble, and I don't know who else, would he like to step up? Got the right one here. Public Works. These are the people that a lot of times go on notice. They're out there in the field cleaning parks, fixing streets, picking up leaves, cleaning the snow, and all that work. And sometimes even then they still get yelled at or, or things like that. But they do a tremendous amount of work that most of the time goes unnoticeable. And I know it doesn't go unappreciated, but it, a lot of times it goes unnoticeable. And you do an, an incredible amount of work. Uh, Mr. Beeble, you've done a great job as acting director. We thank you and your crew for the dedication that you give to the city of Sheboygan. And in honor of that, proclamation, whereas public work services provided in our community are an integral part of our citizens' everyday lives, and whereas the support of an understanding and informed citizenry is vital to the efficient operation of public work systems, and programs such as water, sewer, streets, and highways, public buildings, and solid waste collections, and whereas the health, safety, and comfort of this community greatly depends on these facilities and services, and whereas the quality and effectiveness of these facilities as well as their planning, design, and construction is vitally dependent upon the efforts and skill of public work officials, and whereas the efficiency of the qualified and dedicated personnel whose staff public works departments is materially influenced by the people's attitude and understanding of the importance of the work they perform. I, Juan Perez, declare May 21st as National Public Works Week. Congratulations. Thank you, Mayor, uh, for those very kind words. And uh, I can't say enough how proud I am of our public works staff and our employees in our department. And I just wanted to let everyone know while I have the floor this evening real quickly is on Saturday, May 19th, we're going to be hosting an open house at our municipal service building from 8 a.m. till noon, as well as our, our wastewater treatment facility on, at 30, uh, 3333 Lakeshore Drive. We'll be providing tours of the facilities. We'll have equipment on display. We'll have uh, information about some of the work we do and garbage collection recycling rules and any other types of questions. There'll be staff available to answer any questions as well. So we'll have a press release coming out later this week with more details. Thank you, David. Appreciate it. And the next one is City Clerk's Week. And of course, again, some, a lot of the work they do goes unnoticed because they're out there in the offices working hard. But all of you had a taste of that because guess who, put up the, who set up the election for all of you? The city clerk's office. They do a tremendous amount of work. They do all the law and license and stuff. It's just, just incredible commitment and dedication from a department in the city of Sheboygan. And so we really do appreciate you and your staff's hard work. Thank you. And in honor of that, the proclamation. Whereas the, city, whereas the office of the city clerk, a time-honored position being one, one of the first let me start over again. Whereas the office of the city clerk, a time-honored position being one of the first recognized and documented public servants, and whereas the office of the city clerk is a vital part of the local government, maintaining official records and documents, records and publishes board, meeting, board minutes, serves as the information center for other governmental agencies and citizens, maintains and oversees the integrity of local, state, and national elections within the community, ensures that all residents have the opportunity to vote and that their vote will count. The clerk is responsible for issuing licenses and permits as well as performing a multitude of other responsibilities within our local government. And whereas the Office of City Clerk provides the professional link between the citizens, the local governing bodies, and agencies of government at other levels, and whereas the City Clerk is pledged to be ever mindful of their neutrality and impartiality, rendering equal service to all, and whereas the city clerk continually strives to improve the administration of the affairs of the office of the city clerk through participation in education, programs, seminars, workshops, and annual meetings of their state, county, and international profession, professional organizations, and where it is, it is certainly most appropriate that we recognize the accomplishments of the office of city clerk. Now, therefore, I, Juan Perez, as mayor, declare 
May 5th as Municipal Clerks Week. Sue, congratulations. Thank you. Well, my point is short and brief. My staff may be low in numbers, but their energy and their commitment to all of you and making sure that you get what you need when you need it. I appreciate them all very much, and I'd like to thank them. They're wonderful. And we do have one more recognition, although there is no proclamation because there was late notice to my office, but I believe it's uh, National Police Weeks today, Chief? Next week. Next week, okay. And the reason we need to announce it today is because there won't be a meeting until then, and then it'll be after the fact. But again, uh, the police department also plays an integral part, very important part, in the public protection and safety of our committee. And Chief, we'd like to thank you and your police officers for the dedication and commitment to our residents. Appreciate that. Okay, then next item will be public forum. Mm -hmm. All right, first on the list would be Susie Lassard. <laughs> and Susie, can I have you pull your mic up just a little bit? And I need your home address, please. 5016 Menning Road, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Menning. Okay. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. Dear Mr. Mayor and all council members, thank you so much for allowing me to be back here once again to voice my concerns with an issue that's within our city. I stand before you today to plead for your intervention regarding the corner of Whedon Creek and South Business Drive. Before you are copies of all the correspondence I have initiated and received over the past nine years. Some letters along the way may have been misplaced, but for the most part, they all sit before you. This corner has received many studies, grants that were supposed to have been filed over seven years ago and finding out they were just done recently. I am frustrated, I'm annoyed, and I'm disappointed. This corner has been held hostage long enough. It has a city street with a county highway running through it. The city must wait for the county, yet it is primarily the citizens of Sheboygan, tax-paying residents that travel these roads. Our police department, our fire department respond to the accidents. Orange Cross responds to the accidents. The tow trucks who operate within our city limits are in Sheboygan. I need our city to implement an intervention in full force for our city. I do understand that there is growth to the south of the intersection. I understand that a plan must be made to accommodate this growth. But what I do not understand is why we cannot implement a temporary solution to the problem as we wait for the permanent plan. I ask for a speed limit to be reduced nine years ago. It was done recently. This in itself has not been an effective measure. You have before you the accidents over a period of time since I last spoke to this council until mid-April. Ironically, there's an accident that involves one of the tenants that, in a property that I manage at Amanda Lane who has also submitted some ideas regarding this corner. He now became a victim. Sorry. I would like to see minimally a sign up prior to this intersection with a flashing yellow light warning our travelers of the dangerous intersection ahead. I would love to see stop signs on each corner up temporarily until the county has their permanent solution. I would like to see something done, something that may stop a bump or a bruise, something that may stop a car from being destroyed and stopping a loss of a life. What I do not want to see up on this corner is a memorial to someone's life who was lost. Do not let this sit in your committees. That's happened already. Please take action now. Summer is upon us. The traffic is going to be heavier with motorcycles, young people, warm weather. Take a stand as a council in its entirety and make this a safe corner as you enter our city. You have the means to make a difference, to make this city safer, and stronger. 
I'm asking you to put forth your efforts into place and keep the promises that were made when you were all elected. I want to thank you once again for your time, and I look forward to a favorable response to my request, as I will not stop my battle, and I will take it wherever and with whomever will help me make a difference for my fine city. Thank you very much. Thank you, Susie. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Next would be Edward Bradley. Mr. Bradley, can you give me your home address, please? It's uh, 4827 Madsen Road. M-A-D-S-O-N? Mm-hmm. And is that in Sheboygan? No, it's in uh, Manitowoc. Manitowoc. Okay, and you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Uh, good evening. I'm here, uh, my name is Ed Bradley. I'm here to talk about Orange Cross Ambulance Service tonight. <clears throat> the current president of Orange Cross, Cross's Board of Directors, was out of town, and she asked me to brief you, uh, at least briefly within five minutes, on uh, Orange Cross Ambulance. Um, many of us remember Yogi Berra, though I know there's a number of younger, older persons who probably don't, but he was a Hall of Fame catcher for uh, the New York Yankees and also a coach, and he always had so many uh, quaint phrases, they became known as Berryisms, and one of them was, uh, I feel like it's deja vu all over again. Yes, it was five years ago that I, we addressed this issue uh, regarding Orange Cross and the contract that Orange Cross has uh, with the city and the county. And I have placed on your desk some information regarding Orange Cross, and some of you are new uh, board members, and I would encourage you to take a look at it when you get a chance. The service we provide to the residents of Sheboygan County and part of, of the city of Sheboygan and parts of Sheboygan County, uh, in summary, Orange Cross is a not-for-profit, pre-acute, care ambulance ser service owned jointly by St. Nicholas Hospital, who was my employer, and the Aurora Healthcare System. We operate under a contract to provide these services. Uh, there's a three-way agreement between the county, the city, and Orange Cross. We have four stations, we have eight ambulances, and operate under the uh, super medical supervision of a board-certified emergency medicine trained uh, physician who happens to also be an EMT. The contract demands strict response time, quality monitoring, and reporting to a special committee to monitor our effectiveness. We are proud of the fact our record for the past 15 years has been great. Not just good, it's been great. Our patient satisfaction level is very high and our paramedic training is second to none. Also enclosed in the pack is a copy of a survey that was performed by the La Crosse, Wisconsin Fire Department and Tri-State Ambulance, which is the Orange Cross of La Crosse, uh, the city of La Crosse. At your leisure, again, I would encourage you to read the summary. Uh, it's only, I think, three or four pages uh, because it gets to the heart of the issue you may or may not vote on tonight. Agenda item 352, a resolution by Alderman Renflesh authorizing the city fire department to provide ambulance service to the citizens of uh, Sheboygan beginning January 1st, 08. This, obviously, the question at the heart is how much money can the fire department bring to the coffers of the city? I'll briefly discuss their projections, but first, uh, that same question was also asked in Matawak and Oshkosh at the time that they had private ambulance services. Two of the cities are in the survey document that you have. And of course, they were told that they were going to make a lot of money. I can tell you, according to this survey that was freely filled out by uh, uh, leaders in Matawak and Oshkosh, Mantawak has lost over $400,000, and Oshkosh has lost over $200,000. In terms of the financial projections, I believe some of you have. I don't know if everybody has them. Uh, in packets that were provided by the fire department, uh, they estimate that they can make about $420,000. That's certainly an impressive number. Of course, they are also projecting that the Medicare and Medicaid discount will only be 15%. Trust me, any health care provider would welcome a Medicare or Medicaid discount of 15%. The Medicare, Medicare pays, will pay Orange Cross Ambulance approximately, Medicare and Medicaid, approximately 50%, not 15% discount. They will pay them 50% of the charges that Orange Cross uh, bills to the, to the programs. And this is not just Orange Cross. Hospitals get paid 50%, uh, and for Medicaid, we get reimbursed about 30%. In terms, um, there you go. As you evaluate your action, 
I would think I've raised enough substantive questions on, on the fire department proposal that waiving the normal procedure of referring to a committee would not occur. I would encourage you, frankly, to vote against the resolution because there is a private service in, in the city and the county that is providing excellent quality care. Our current charges are extremely competitive. The city does not pay for any of this unless, of course, their employees use an ambulance service or they're insured people. It's a spectacular example also of city-county um, joint efforts. I guess I would close with another barryism that was, he was famous for saying, when you come to a fork in the road, take it. I would encourage you not to take that fork in the road. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bradley. Next would be Tom Paneski. And Tom, can you give me your home address, please? Uh, 28 North Point Drive. 28 North Point. And you'll have five minutes, sir. Be less. Uh, your Honor, <laughs> uh, Council Members, my name is Tom Paneski. As you know, Essling in Germany, our sister city, is sending a delegation of 22 representatives to Sheboygan, headed by the Lord Mayor, Dr. Jugendzieger, to help celebrate the 40th anniversary of our relationship. They will be visiting from May 17th to May 21st. I am fortunate to be a member of the Mayor's International Committee that is working to make their visit a success and to show off our wonderful Sheboygan. Let me say I've seen that the community is putting its best foot forward and I wanted to share that with you this evening. As you know, as you saw earlier tonight, the community bank has donated $5,000 to help defray some of the cost. Johnsonville is sponsoring an event, an evening event at the Deland Community Center. Blue Harbor has provided rooms at a major discount. Gifts are being donated by Kohler Company, Roger Lam, the Wild Center, Sargento Cheese, and Johnsonville. Acuity is opening its doors for a tour, and the old restaurant is putting on a cooking demonstration and lunch. I say thank you, community. Also, thank you to the international committee members, your own Gene Kittleson, Fran Berg, Dorothy Getzler, Dieter Helm, Mayor, your secretary, Mayor Rager, Mary Rager, excuse me, uh, Tom Riemann from People to People, and Trent Romer from Community Bank, who has attended many of our meetings and has worked diligently in planning a successful visit. To those other individuals who have given time and talent and who I am not aware, I also say thank you. The big event is an anniversary banquet, music and dancing, dinner at Blue Harbor, Sunday evening, May 20th. When you see them or see a, a delegation of people wandering around, either downtown, along the riverfront, or anywhere, extend a smile and a hearty Sheboygan welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. And then we have Ernest Kepler. Mr. Kepler, can I have your home address, please? 2533 Lakeshore Drive, Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Good evening. Tonight, I am representing the uh, Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliance. It is understood that per the original agenda for tonight's Common Council meeting, there was going to be a request for a suspension of rules motion to bring forth a resolution for passage that would change the ambulance service for the city of Sheboygan from the current private provider, Orange Cross, to the public under the fire department. It is also understood that this tactic has been rescinded and that now the request for a suspension of rules will not occur. Thank you. Placing ambulance service as part of the fire department may or may not be justified and perhaps overall beneficial to the city. However, by railroading this important decision through the Common Council this evening would not have been prudent or proper. This would be a dynamic change for the city, and it deserves the complete scrutiny of the entire Common Council, plus citizen input regarding the pros and cons of the cost advantages, plus improved service of a system that is already working well in the private sector with Orange Cross. We question the propriety of the method of key city officials soliciting 
for the original agenda to suspend the rules and vote on a proposed resolution to disengage the city from its association with Orange Cross and establish a city-run ambulance service. If the Common Council sees merit in having our city take over the ambulance service, we please request that the issue be discussed in detail by the Committee of the Whole and that citizen input be allowed. If all facts are present and up to date, this could be accomplished next week, Monday, May 14th, followed by the Common Council at its next meeting, Monday, May 21st. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kepler. And last on the list would be Susan Hart. Susan, can I have your home address, please? Uh, 422 Clifton, here in Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes. Thanks. I just had so much fun up here a couple weeks ago, I had to come back. Um, no, I know a secret, and maybe you all don't know it. But today is my boss's birthday. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'll pay for this tomorrow. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mayor Perez. This is from Mary and I. Thank you very much. And thank you, Susan. And thank the public for addressing the Common Council to, uh, tonight. Uh, there's always some interesting points that are made by different members of the community, and quite frankly, Alderman, that's what makes this city the great city that it is, is having a differences of opinion and perhaps at some point uh, arriving to some consensus and moving in a positive direction for the city of Sheboygan. So thank you again to those who addressed the council. Next item on the agenda will be uh, mayor's comments. I had originally indicated a two separate sets of comments. I will just address one, and that is regarding the departing employees. I, I felt strong enough, that, and it was important enough for me to point out to the aldermen and to the public that is watching that there have been some rumors floating around, and rumors are always going to float around. I've learned that in the last two years. But there are some rumors going around that certain people in the city, uh, in particular key uh, departments, are leaving the city because of this administration. Now, not once have I heard any one of those individuals that have left tell me that's the reason. Not only that, I personally asked them if that was the reason. And, and no offense taken if that was the case. I, I, I said no offense. I'm sure the council will feel no offense if that's the case. Not, not a single one said I am leaving because of this administration. I say this too because it somewhat got injected into the last election and it became a little issue there floating around that people were unhappy with this administration. And folks, I'll tell you what, if anybody is happy, that door's open. Anytime they'd like to come in and talk to me, I'm sure the alderman would love to talk to anybody. Uh, just recently we had Mr. Gephardt leave. I know when I became mayor, Mr. Gephardt had indicated earlier that he had talked about it. When I was alderman, I heard, him talk, or I heard about him talking about it. So things like these have happened uh, throughout time, and it, it just comes a point in time where they make that de uh, decision. Marie Ellis, the same thing. Uh, uh, we have uh, Tom Holton, who left. I'll tell you, if I could leave for the reason Tom Holton left, I'd leave too, because he's, he went off to, to a, a very nice job and uh, one that really, truly makes him happy. Uh, but I ask you, if you hear these rumors, let, let's, let's nip them in the bud, uh, and if, if there's some substance to that, let, let's discuss that, because I don't know that, that, that something like that should be interfering with, with our, our direction and our discussions and the, the daily operations of the city of Sheboygan. I will uh, announce to the council and to the public that we uh, are looking at possibly two new hires, one for public works director, which has been held temporarily by an acting director, and we're looking to possibly hire pretty soon a new assessor that has uh, been held vacant since Marie Ellis left. The interviews have been held, and it's just a matter of making a, a notification, of, of perhaps an offer. Uh, I know Paul Ed Enders is working on the position that Pete Fullerton had, uh, and uh, so that's moving along just fine. But I wanted to assure the aldermen and the public that if there's any issues 
with this administration, and I refer that specifically to me, or issues with this administration referring to the alderman, we have an open heart and open mind. People, all people need to do is come talk to us. And whatever is bugging anybody or troubling anybody, I think we can sit down and talk rationally and cordially and uh, civilly. So with that, uh, I will move on. Thank you very much. Hearings. We have two hearings tonight. We have change of zoning for property located at 1523 Colorado Court from class neighborhood residential to class urban commercial classification. We have a second hearing change of zoning for property located at 617 Michigan Avenue from class neighborhood residential to class neighborhood office classification. Is there anyone that would like to address the council? Is there anyone that would like to address the council? Ma'am, please come up. And which one are you looking at, the Colorado Court Col or Michigan? Colorado Air? Court. Okay, and can I have your name? June Lalamont. And could you spell your last name for me? L-A-L-L-E-M-O-N-T. L-A-L-L-A-M-O-N-T? -E. Oh, E, okay, M-O-N-T. And June, what is your home address? 1809 South 15th Street. Okay, go ahead. Okay, to the mayor and council. I'm speaking about the property owner on Business Drive in Colorado Court wanting to change his home from residential to business so he can sell insurance. Colorado Court is too narrow for a two-way traffic when cars are parked on both sides of the street. There is only a yield sign on Colorado and 15th Street. We would like the neighborhood to stay residential. We understand this property can't go back to residential once it has been zoned commercial. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? President Hanna. Mr. Mayor. I would like to move to close the hearing. Second. Motion and second to close hearings. Under discussion. Alderman Kittleton. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm just wondering, can Mr. Sokolowski address that at all that on Colorado Court? Is he able to say? If, if you'd like, so yes, would, I would, would you make a motion to open the floor first? Could I make a, I'd like to make a motion to open the floor to Mr. Sokolowski. Motion and second. Under discussion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries, Mr. Sokolowski. Mayor, Council, good evening. Um, basically what we have here are two hearings this evening. The one on Colorado Court is in an area that is presently zoned neighborhood residential. It is in an area that is residential all at this time. There are no businesses in the neighborhood. Um, there is a commercial classification across the street. I believe it's the Kramer property where the billboards are, the large vacant parcel that is directly across the street. This was a rezoning that staff had recommended denial for. However, the plan commission did unanimously vote to approve the request. And so the reason staff had denied it was we just thought that at this point in time to rezone one parcel was uh, or a spot instead of an area wasn't the proper thing to do at this point in time. So staff is still recommending against the proposal. However, plan commission did recommend approval. Okay, thank you. All right. <laughs> we let the Boy Scouts walk out very nice and quietly because in that bunch there may be a mayor or an alderman later on. So. Okay. 
Is there anyone else? Okay, so there was a motion on the floor to close uh, hearings. Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Hearings are closed. Consent agenda 3 1 through 313. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file all ROs and accept and adopt all RCs. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Rainflies. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd like to discuss with the City Planning Commission item 3-3, three, three, uh, the city giving up its right uh, on the ex possible or theoretical extension on Taylor Drive. I guess the rationale behind giving up. Well, I understand there's no plans of any road be going, putting through the right, there right now. But why are we giving up potential future rights in the future we really can't predict? Anybody from City Planning willing to discuss that? Uh, Paulette or who? Sokolowski? Wait, hold on. You're not a department head, so I need a motion to open the floor. Motion, motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Sokolowski, please. Hello again. <laughs> um, in this particular case, what we're after is um, recently the city, city owned some property just north of, of the parcel that Taylor Avenue presently terminates at. Okay. That property um, was recently had some reservations in it and it was dedicated, the, the council previously had decided to split that right away and give half the property to Evergreen Park and half to Maywood. So there was a certain section north of the property we're talking about right now that was already given away as far as that right away for the park purposes. This evening what we're talking about is a while ago when there was some subdivision of land in that area, the city at that point in time reserved the right of way just in case Taylor would ever extend to the north. At this point in time, and the council may recall, is that there is a, a, a development proposal called Taylor Point Condominiums. It still has to get approval and things like that. But their concern is that they can't really move forward with their development if this reservation is right there because that is part of where some of the condominiums are proposed to run through. So this action this evening is, in fact, getting rid of that reservation, basically, in essence, allowing for that development and, and basically saying that Taylor would, I mean, you could always buy the property back to go ahead and do it. And it's just reserved at this point in time. It's not dedicated. The city doesn't own it. It's just held in reserve so that if it ever came down, we would have the opportunity to purchase it for that purpose. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Okulowski. Next, we have Alderman Sarda. Thank you, Your Honor. When um, it's appropriate, I would like to pull forward 2633 that deals with the rezoning of property 1523 Colorado Court. I'm sorry, which one? Um, 2633. Well, that's okay. After the consent? 26, I'm sorry again. 26? 2633. Matters laid over. This one here. Matters laid over, yeah. On the, on the consent agenda, uh, there's a light. Uh, Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to pull item number 3-2 and ask for a separate vote. Alderman 3-2, an RO by the City Planning Commission recommending documents to be drawn and passed to sell the property located at Terra Lane behind South 18th Fire Station to the Sheboygan Area School District for the construction of two new houses. You'd like a separate vote? Yes. And uh, the, the reason why I'm asking for a separate vote is because I received letters and phone calls from citizens in that area that never wanted the land sold and they wanted to see a park go there. So, so that's why I asked for a separate vote tonight. Okay, I need you to make a motion to accept and file the RO. I'll make a motion to accept and file the RO. Second. Second. Under discussion. If there is none, please call the roll. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Serta. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? No. Verhasselt? Aye. And Wangaman? Aye. 14 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. 
on the balance of the consent agenda, 3-1 to 3-13 minus 3-2. Any further discussion? There be a none. Please call the roll. Falk? <laughs> okay, thanks. Serta? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleinus? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Alderman, uh, all right, I check. Sarah, if you wanted to pull forward 2633. I move 2633 be pulled forward and that the RO be accepted and placed on file. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second to put 2633 uh, to, to accept and file and pass the attached ordinance. Okay, under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, after uh, making that motion, I would ask that the council consider denying the recommendation due to um, the concerns addressed by the citizen, Ms. Um, Lullaman had explained, and also um, Steve Stokolowski. Thank you, Alderman Serta. Alderman Rinfleisch. I would like to inquire if the party that is requesting the ordinance change are, is present today to discuss their plans. Ms. Paulette, is that the applicant here? Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Would you like that person to speak, Alderman Rinkley? Um, my, my question would be, be posed to uh, the person and party. The question is, is there a way to work out with the neighbors instead of uh, possibly ruining the neighborhood? Is there other options available? Then I need you to make a motion to open the floor again. Also move. Second. Motion and second to open the floor. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Ma'am, if you would, please come to the podium. Would you like to pull the mic just a little bit lower? Thank you. And your name, please? Song Yang. And that's T-Z-O-N-G and then Yang? Yes. And your address? 2633 White Fox Drive, okay. Sheboygan. All right, go ahead. Well, um, if the particular um, uh, site is not for a small, small office, where else you recommend? It's perfect for a life insurance um, an office. And I have operated an office in Chimoygan um, in the past seven years. And. Okay, we got a question from an element of Yeah, any um, questions? Please stand up. Sure. Can you uh, discuss what the property currently is used for? The, the property is currently used for a residential. Oh, okay. And it's currently right on the corner of Business Drive in Colorado? Yes. Okay. So it is technically possible that it could still be used as a residential property? It, it could be. Okay. Alderman Bourne, please stay there. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Ma'am, I noticed on, in your letter here it says that there's a shed to be torn down. It, would all the parking have to be right on the street, or would and your, any of your clients be able to pull in or make an area of that where that shed is for, for parking for your clients? That's the, that's the plan, but it, everything will be um, um, under the commercial grade that it's required, and I'm, I'm planning to make the, um, the shed, uh, in front of the shed and the um, garage be a, a um, parking space there for my clients. Thank you. Any further? Alderman Serta? Thank you, Your Honor. I was wondering if Steve Stokolowski could, um, if he could testify to that, that if the property is conducive to off-street parking in terms of, I guess, building regulations, because at this time when I had inquired with, from Paulette Enders, there was no um, parking that was communicated off-street parking at that time. We, we will we'll call him up in a minute. Are there any other questions? Okay, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I, Sir Alderman Serta, would you like to make a motion to open the floor again? So moved. Second. Motion second to open up the floor to Mr. Sokolowski. All in favor say aye. Aye. 
Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Sokolowski up front, please. Thank you. Right, um, right now, the home is a vacant single-family home. Um, what they're doing this evening is, you, right as it sits right now, you can't apply. You can't even apply for the use that they're ask for, asking for a commercial use because of the zoning. So, in order to um, be able to apply to construct an, or redevelop the site from a home to a business office, <clears throat> they first have to go through this rezoning process. So that's why they're here this evening. If it was approved then it would have to go through the site plan approval process through the City of Sheboygan Plan Commission. They would have to submit a site plan showing parking, showing off-street parking, things like that. I believe right now that they have a garage, and I think there's two parking spaces, a driveway off the alley that would have about two off-street parking spaces at this point in time. So, so that's uh, at this point, we're not technically looking at the, the specific office use <clears throat> what the concern here that the council needs to be aware of is, is this property the right place to change to, from the neighborhood residential, a single family, to a commercial use? Because technically, even if the applicant, something happened and the property got rezoned, any of the uses that are in the urban commercial zone could now be applied for by the plan commission if that change does indeed happen. So sometimes it's not just the initial use, it's the long-term aspect of what could be there in the future. Okay, thank you very much. Alderman, oh, excuse me, Alderman Ryan, did you have a question for? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Sokolowski, if this, you know, if this were approved for this purpose um, and being rezoned in the future if somebody else applied for another purpose, it would still have to go through all of the committees in order to be approved for that purpose. That's correct. And at this purpose right here, it says 85% of their clients will be, they'll be visited off site. Uh, in the life insurance business, I doubt you would ever have more than two people visit a single life insurance office at the same time. Sure. That's my opinion. Um, I just don't see where this would be very disruptive myself is, is what I'm thinking. Thank, thank you, Alderman Ryan. Uh, Alderman Kittleson for Mr. Sokolowski. Yes, thank, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Mayor. I I'm just want this to be clear in my mind uh, uh, that once you zone it urban commercial, then you're, you cannot go back to a residential neighborhood, correct? Is that? Well, it, the property itself, you could, at that point in time, any of the uses that are in the urban commercial zone, and I believe a single family use is a conditional use in the urban commercial zone, so it could actually be in there. Um, but what you're doing is you're allowing for um, other uses, retail, uh, professional service like the office, uh, tavern, restaurant, um, other types. Obviously, they would all have to come to the plan commission as far as a change of use or things like that that would be different. So there might be the opportunity to change that, but if it's one, uh, say for example, uh, insurance office and now it's a dental office or something like that. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes that's a similar enough use that they can just get what's called an occupancy permit through the building inspection department with no formal land use approval. So if the use is similar enough then they can get an occupancy permit. If it's a major change, major change say for example being from office to tavern or something like that, now we're talking a conditional use permit and it would need to be reviewed again by the plan commission before that change could be made. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Sokolowski. <clears throat> the, we'll take the vote on 2633 then. Uh, uh, and an I vote would be to approve the ordinance and approve the zoning change. Okay, okay. please call the roll. Serta? No. Gisha? No. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? No. Excuse me? Aye. Thank you. Kittleson? Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? No. Rinfleisch? No. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? No. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? No. Boren? Aye. And Balk? Aye. Eight ayes, seven noes. Motion fails. Motion carries. What is it? It just needs a majority. Just needs a majority? Mm -hmm. Okay. So motion carries in. Mm -hmm. Okay, going back. 
Communications and petitions, 314 through 316 to be referred. Report of officers two, 317 by the Director of Human Resources and Labor Relations submitting a letter from Dave Cookock, I think I pronounced that right, asking to rescind his previous letter of resignation as an Environmental Park Director of Baywood. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and it's really a, a pleasure to, to ask the council to accept and file and rescind the resignation. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? There being none. Yes, all yes. Uh, President Hanna. And and I think for the for the community of uh, of Sheboygan, it's it's not just having David stay with us, uh, but his wife is a is a beloved teacher at North High, so it's a it's a big win for Sheboygan. Thank you, President Hanna. <coughs> no more discussion. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, Three eighteen. Lies over to June 4th, 319 through 334 to be referred, except Alderman Hanna. Yes, on item uh, 326, um, Mr. Mayor, I would like to move to file. Second. Motion and second to file 326. Under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. On 328, please note a request has been made uh, by an alderman to refer that to Building Use Committee also. Make that notation, 328. Resolutions introduced three. 335 by Alderman Hanna, Bourne, Clayunas, Bout, and Gisha, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2007 budget. President Hanna. Mr. Mayor, first I would like to make a motion to suspend Second. Motion and second suspend. Is there any objection to suspension? There being none, please proceed. And then I would like to make a motion to put the RO upon his passage. Second. Motion and second. Put the resolution upon his passage. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. <clears throat> Kittleson. Aye. Clayunas. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Wangaman, Aye. Boren, Aye. Bauk, Aye. and Serta. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 336 by Alderman Hanna, Boren, Clayunas, Bauk, Gisha, authorizing the purchase agreement to enter into a contract for the purchase of the municipal court software. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First, I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. Motion to second to suspend. Is there any objection? There is none. Please proceed. I would like to make a motion to put the resolution upon as passage. Second. Motion and second to put 336 upon its passage. Under discussion. Alderman Rinschleisch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would just like an explanation of the rationale behind uh, waiving the competitive bid process for this project. Um, Susan. And Susan is not a department head, too. I need a motion to open the so floor. Second. Motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, Susan. The municipal court, when they started out last year, had had a program that was uh, designed by a gentleman who has designed the police software, and they wanted it to interface. Unfortunately, that's not working out for the municipal court. The municipal courts within Wisconsin um, use a program called TIPS, and the state several years ago gave that, this company a grant to develop the software. So it's going to meet all the state reporting requirements. Um, we've seen some reports they've sent to us. I, so that's why we're asking to not go through a competitive bid process. Any other questions? Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Not a question, but just a, a comment. The, this isn't public construction, so it's not we're not bound by the public construction bid laws. This is our local ordinance that provides uh, for a waiver of the council for <clears throat> bidding on certain or uh, entering into certain contracts. So, you know, it's it's appropriate within uh, our ordinances. It doesn't violate the state statute or anything like that. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Alderman Clayunas. 
Thank you, Your Honor. I also believe it's been being used in many cities as, yes. their, as their system, so it, it's, it's been working and it's very yes. compatible. In fact, uh, the, the partner municipal court that the state assigned to work with us just left their program to go to TIPS. So. Thank you, Susan. Uh -huh. Okay, we've got uh, 336. There was a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Serta? Aye. And Gisha? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 337 lies over. 338 through 342 to be referred. Report of Committee 6, 343 to be referred. Report of Committee 7, 344 to be referred. Ordinances introduced 10, 345 through 348 to be referred. Matters laid over 11, 2632 and RO, RO number 6080607 by the City Plan Commission. Recommending amending the zoning for property located at 617 Michigan Avenue from Class NR Neighborhood Residential to No Neighborhood Office Classification. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and file and the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Heideman. Aye. Kittleson. Clionis. Meyer. Montemayor. Renfleisch. Ryan. Vanderweel, Verhasselt, Wangaman, Aye. Boren, Aye. Bauk, Serta, Gisha, Aye. and Hannah. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2656, resolution number 312607 by Alderman Graf, Hannah, Susha, Boren, and Clayunas authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 07 budget. President Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. May I take both 2656 and 2661 together? Please do. And I would like to put both resolutions upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to put 2656 and 61 upon their passage. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren, Bauk, Serta, Aye. Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. and Heidemann. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law, 349 will be referred to Public Works. 350 will be referred to Special Committee on Risk Management. 351, a resolution by Alderman Hannah authorizing the City of Sheboygan Office of the Mayor to submit an application to the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development for lead-based paint hazard control grant funds. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, do I need to suspend the rules no. on this one? Mm -hmm. Great. I would put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to put 351 upon its passage. Any discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Serta? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Heidemann and Kittleson. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 352 will be referred to Committee of the Whole. 353 will be referred to Committee of the Whole Finance and Motor Vehicle Committee. Please make that notation. Next item on the agenda is notice of intent to discharge the Finance Committee regarding the document listed below. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I move that the... Uh we need a motion. Be Excuse me. We need a motion to discharge first. Oh, I make a motion to discharge the uh, finance committee of, of this matter. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Now, accept the vote. Do we need a suspension of the rules, Your Honor? No. No. I move that the uh, resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is a uh, motion to convene in closed session. Uh, you want to do the rest of the other matters first? Steve's other matters? You want to do other matters before? Do you want to do other matters? 
We're going to, because we're going to go into uh, closed session at, uh, towards the end, we're going to do other matters. Please refer to the other matters. Not the other matters after close, but the other matters that generally we do. Okay. Attorney McLean. 354 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication being petitioned from residents in the area of South 20th Street and David Avenue regarding the number of traffic accidents at that intersection and requesting either a stop or a yield sign be installed. That will be referred to Public Protection and Safety Committee. 355 is submitting communication from Sharp Pakniak and Jane Davis Wood of the Harbor Center bid requesting permission to hold an annual family festival in downtown Sheboygan on August 18th and requesting that 8th Street be closed to vehicular traffic from Ontario to Center Avenue and then the one block of Center Avenue to Penn Avenue from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. That will be referred to Public Protection and Safety. 356 is a communication from Jerry Festel requesting a no parking here to corner sign on the corner of Wiedemeyer Street and Wilson Avenue on both the east corner and the west corner due to safety concerns in this area of the Early Learning Center. And that would also go to Public Protection and Safety. 357 is a communication from Connie and Ralph Worm stating their concerns regarding the noise pollution and air quality from the junkyard at Eisner Avenue and North 21st Street. And finally, that too will go to Public Protection and Safety. 358 is a resolution authorizing the designation of several sites as historic. That lies over. 359 is submitting a notice and application for judgment of foreclosure and sale in the matter of Wells Fargo Bank N.A. versus the City of Sheboygan et al. And that will be referred to risk management. 360 is an R.O. by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2008 and June 30, 2009. And that will be referred to Law and Licensing Committee. 361 is submitting a communication from Jeff and Sherry Yeager requesting that the city look at the lot sandwiched between the two entrances to King's Court that the city purchased from homeowners following the large flood and developing this into a bare bones park area for the south side. And that will be referred to Public Works and, and Board of Parks and Forestry Commission. And now I'd ask uh, President Hanna for a motion to convene in closed session. You need to read that. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A uh, motion to convene in closed session under the exception provided under section 19.851E uh, for the purpose of deliberating the investing of public funds and conducting other specified public business regarding the Grand Stay Hotel project where competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session. Second. Motion and second to go into closed session. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Oh, we need a roll call. Hold on, we'll take that back. We need a roll call. Please call the roll. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Aye. <laughs> okay. Rinfleisch? Here. Not here. Aye. <laughs> Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Foran? Aye. Falk? Here. Serta? <laughs> Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Cleunas. Aye. 15 ayes. Thank you. Motion carries. At this time, I'd ask the public and everyone to, uh, to uh, excuse us. We will go into closed session behind closed doors. Take a two-minute break. <laughs>